بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين المصطفى أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطيرا الله صل على محمد وآل محمد واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم مجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقرآنه الحميد وقوله الحق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال موسى إن تكفروا أنتم ومن في الأرض جميعا فإن الله لغني حميد ألم يأتكم نبأ الذين من قبلكم قوم نوح وعاد وثمود والذين من بعدهم لا يعلمهم إلا الله جاءتهم رسلهم بالبينات فردوا أيديهم في أفواههم وقالوا إنا كفرنا بما أرسلتم به وقالوا إنا كفرنا بما أرسلتم به وإنا لفي شك مما تدعوننا إليه مريب قالت رسلهم أفي الله شك فاطر السماوات والأرض يدعوكم ليغفر لكم من ذنوبكم ويؤخركم إلى أجل مسمى قالوا إن أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا تريدون أن تصدونا عما كان يعبد آباؤنا فأتونا بسلطان مبين صدق الله العلي العظيم سلام عليكم My dear brothers and sisters May Allah accept your أعمال and your طاعات إن شاء الله here we are approaching now almost the end of the holy month. We are in the last week of this holy month of Ramadan. May Allah accept our a'mal and our ta'at and illuminate our hearts and minds with the Qur'an. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if by this night he has not yet forgiven us and removed us from the hellfire, then inshallah by the barakah of this night and these remaining nights to remove us inshallah. With the barakah of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam hu alayhim ajma'in. Continuing our discussion of Surah Ibrahim. So if you remember, we started the surah with the alphabets, and then we said, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka li tukhrija nasa min al-dhulumati ila al-nur, bi idni rabbihim ila sirat al-aziz al-hameed. That it is a book that you we revealed down to you so that you take people from the darknesses to the light the nur of hidayah the nur of guidance by the permission of their lord to the path of al aziz al hamid the honorable the mighty and the one who's praised allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praiseworthy indeed allah alladhi lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard the one who has allah has the control of what's seven the heavens and the skies and woe to the disbelievers from a severe punishment Three characteristics for them. They love the dunya. Two, they don't want people to guide. They want people to remain blind, misguided, so they can propagate their lies. And they want to deviate others as well. Not only do they want to be deviated, they don't want guidance, they deviate others. Indeed, those are in great misguidance. And then, we did not send any messenger but with the tongue of his community, his people, so that they guide them, they teach them, they educate them, they understand their mentality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then guides whomever he wills and misguides those who don't want to be guided. Again, Allah does not take the free will away from people. They choose, but Allah doesn't force anyone. Okay, 
and he is indeed the uh, mighty. He's, yani he's capable of making everyone guided. He can guide everyone. But then there is no free will anymore. We would become like robots. That he programs us and then khalas, we do whatever he wants. Yes, everything is done under his permission, subhanahu wa ta'ala. With his will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he does not take the free will away from us. We are given the choice. And indeed he is wise, of course. And then we spoke last time. We met, we discussed. وَلَقَدْ أَغْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا We sent Musa with our signs. And أَخْرِجْ قَوْمَكَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ Take your people out from the darknesses to the light. And remind them of the days of Allah. أيام الله. And we said these are of the days of Allah. These, month, these days of the holy month of Ramadan. The days of the wiladat of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Their shahada, their wafayat. The days of Muharram. These are days where people turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They seek guidance. And there are some major days like the days of Eid al-Ghadir, days of uh, those ayad, those blessings. Days where Allah punished the tyrants. Those people remember these days. These are of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, and those are signs for everyone who is extremely patient, extremely grat grateful. So these are the attributes of success you are extremely patient you are grateful eventually you'll succeed you need perseverance and grit as they say and then when musa السلام, told his people remember the blessing of allah so he's trying to remind them when allah saved you from pharaoh and the people of pharaoh who used to punish you and torture you with all kinds of torture and slaughter your boys, enslave your girls. And indeed, and that was a huge uh, test and difficulty. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And your Lord has said that if you are grateful, I will increase you. If you're ungrateful, then my punishment is severe. So that's where we're, we're left at last day. Tonight, insha'Allah, we'll begin from ayah number 8. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَقَالَ مُوسَى إِن تَكْفُرُوا أَنْتُمْ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ And Musa said, If you and all of the people on this earth reject Allah, وَالْعِيَاضُ بِاللَّهِ They don't, you don't believe in Allah, وَالْعِيَاضُ بِاللَّهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ Allah is all sufficient, all rich. And he is still praiseworthy. Hamid is someone who is constantly being praised. Because we read, for example, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So even if the people of the world disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is still the Lord of the worlds. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah الذي لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا. Praise be to him who does not have any companions and does not have any children. So he'll still be praised or praiseworthy. Whether... You praise him or you don't praise him. He's still praiseworthy. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this means that Allah does not really want you to worship him for his own benefit. It's for your own benefit. You benefit from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I mentioned in the previous lecture, if you remember, when I said that people who follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a society that obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani justice will be there, the whole society, people will be happy in the society, yani people will feel the benefit themselves. The relationship between each other will be positive, the relationship between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the relationship between them and themselves, yani deep inside they will feel at happiness, at joy, and they will gain inshallah from the tawfiqat. So therefore, these are all signs that we need to keep in mind. That whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to do, it is for our own benefit. And what he told us to stay away from, it is for our own harm. Not that he gains anything. Billah. Okay, so Musa says to his people that if you and all the people on this earth disbelieve, Allah is all sufficient, all rich, and all praiseworthy. Okay, next. Alam yatikum naba ulladina min kablikum kawmi nuhin wa adin wa thamuda wa ladina min ba'dihim la ya'lamuhum illa Allah. Has the news not come to you? Now, this is either from Musa alayhi salam 
or it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling the Muslims. Yani, so either Musa is continuing to speak or Allah now is speaking to the Muslims. Either way. Has the news not come to you? Alam yatikum naba'u alladhina min qablikum? The people before you, the nations before you. Who are these people? Well, qawmi Nuhin, the people of Nuh, the people of Ad, the people of Thamud, wa Thamud alladhina jabu al-sakhra bil-wad. Nuh, the longest living prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. According to some hadith, he lived 2,300 years. 950 of them after he received the message among his people but then after and then the flooding came he lived through the flood and then after the flood so total 2300 years is how long the life of Noah alayhi salam and then Ad and Thamud Thamud today if you go to a place in uh, northern Saudi Arabia at Bilad al-Hijaz there is uh, an area called Mada'an Salih you can actually look them up online it is the place of Thamud, where they used to live. Look at the, 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 the place. Subhanallah, how amazing it is. These people who lived thousands of years ago, and how they carved the stone and the rocks in such beautiful buildings and made all these wonderful things. And these people who lived thousands of years ago. Yani Allah is saying, look at them. They lived so long. They were so powerful. They were so uh, developed and advanced. But where are they today? Everything is gone. People are gone. Some people have walked on this earth and we don't even know who they are anymore. Yani their names are خلص, yani some, some person, just like you know, some insect that walked on this earth and is gone. That's it. Subhanallah. You know, people who lived 5,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, 500 years ago. There are places today in some Muslim countries where there used to be cemeteries but now the cities have expanded so after 50 years 100 years they left the graves now that what they did is they built roads they built buildings such that these cemeteries خلص, are non-existent anymore that's it يعني these people subhanallah they have actually no sign of them anymore and how do we know about us too subhanallah us when we invest so much time to look so good and invest so much on our beauty, not that we shouldn't be doing this, you know, it's mustahab to invest on beauty and all that. But one should remember that, you know, this cheek of mine is going to be put on the sand one day. And that's it. Khalas. And this wonderful body of mine is going to be eaten up by the insects and the bacteria and it's going to be decomposed. And maybe after 500 years from now, a thousand years from now, we will be nobodies, as if someone just walked on this earth and is gone, خلاص. he does not exist anymore. وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ These are signs for people who believe, who reflect. And that's why Imam al-Sajjad in the court of Sham, when he got up and he gave a khutbah, he reminded people, he said, people remember the Akhirah, remember the nations before you. They lived longer lives than you. They were stronger than you had more signs than you and now where are they خلاص, they're gone that's it so these are signs for people look at those people Nuh, Ad, Thamud مِن بَعْدِهِمْ لَا يَعْلَمُهُمْ إِلَّا اللَّهِ and those who are after them no one knows them other than Allah Allah sent subhanahu wa ta'ala 124,000 prophets of those 25 are mentioned in the Quran we don't know where their other prophets were sent, the nations that who they were sent to. I mean, some other prophets are mentioned, their names are not mentioned in the Quran too. Yes, but 124,000 prophets, where did they go? Allahu A'lam, God knows. Maybe someone to Europe, maybe someone to North America, maybe someone to uh, India and China. Allahu A'lam, God knows. Allahu A'lam, wherever there were nations, Allah says we would not punish unless we send messengers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent messengers, but we don't know of all these nations and all those people. And then what happened? جَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُلُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ Those people, those communities, their prophets, their messengers came to them with signs, clear signs, any miracles, logical signs. They would speak to them. What were the responses? فَرَدُّوا أَيْدِيَهُمْ فِي أَفْوَاهِهِمْ First, their people were like, oh, 
you know, they were like, you know, they cut their hands on their mouths in shock. Like, you know what are they talking about? And what else? وَقَالُوا إِنَّا كَفَرْنَا بِمَا أُسِلْتُمْ بِهِ And we reject this avow, this belief in what you are sent to us with. يعني you want us to believe in Allah? We do kufr wal'ayadu billah. Kufr wal'ayadu billah. Wal'ayadu billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us among the disbelievers. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says that one kind of kufr is people who reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would say that nothing would hurt us and nothing would make us perish other than time. That's it. Those are known as ad-dahriya, the people of the time. That's what kind of kufr wal billah. Kufr al-juhud. Then there is another kind of kufr, which is kind of kufr according to the Quran, and that is the kufr of juhud, disbelief in Allah with recognition. While the person knows, Allah says in Surah An-Naml, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسَهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسَهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا That they reject it, but deep inside their, their selves recognize this is the truth. But they just don't want to accept the truth. Yeah, and some people are in denial. They just don't want to believe. Don't want to accept the truth. That's another kind of kufr wal billah. Another kind of kufr wal billah is kufr uh, al-ni'mah. Allah sends ni'am, blessings to Allah, to humanity, but they disbelieve them. And I mentioned the example of uh, Sulaiman alayhi salam, the prophet, when he saw the throne of Balqis before him, he said, this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test me, to see. This is of the grace of Allah. هَذَا مِنْ فَضْلِ رَبِّي To test me. Am I going to be grateful or ungrateful? You know, so people who are grateful to Allah, يعني they submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Surah Al-Insan, we showed him the path. He is either grateful or ungrateful. يعني this is haq, this is batil. You choose. When you are grateful, you submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shukur, not just to say alhamdulillah. That's one part, but you have to also give of the ni'mah, submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, share the blessing that Allah has given you with others. That's another kind of kufr. People who don't do that, they're rejecting the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another kind of kufr, wal'iyadu billah, is a kufr of the a'mal. What that means is some people... Allah says about them in the Quran, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ Do you believe in some part of the Quran and don't believe in other parts? Now there are some people who, for example, they say that I don't pay khums. You say, why don't you pay khums? He says, well, you know, I don't know. I, I, I can't pay out money. But it's wajib. I know it's wajib. I know. And I know I'm doing something wrong. But what can I do? I cannot give money out of my pocket. I'd rather die before giving money. Some people are like this. Other people, however, say, why don't you give khums? We say, well, the Quran doesn't say there is khums. There is no khums in the religion of Allah. So this khums was at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and now it's not khums anymore. That kind, that's, that's kufr wal billah. That's a kind of kufr. Allah says, and he prescribed, he mandated hajj to upon people. وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا Anyone who's capable, who's able to do so. بعدين, وَمَنْ كَفَرَ يعني those who have the ability to go for hajj. And they have all the means. They have the money, they have the health, they have everything. But they still say, oh, I'm too young to go to hajj. Allah considers this as kufr wal billah. If someone dies in this state, when he was able to go to hajj, but did not go to hajj, he would not die as a Muslim. He would not die as a Muslim wal billah. So that's kind of kufr. So be careful. You know, some people will a'adhu billah. I hear people, for example, sometimes saying, this is halal, this is haram. No, Quran doesn't say this. It's not up to us. This is up to the fuqaha. Maraj'u al-taqlid. The reputable maraj'u al-taqlid in Iran, in Iraq. May Allah bless them. A person comes up, for example, and says, "This uh, back at the time of the Prophet, they used to give twice the inheritance to the man. Then they would give the son to the, then they would give the daughter. That's at the time of Rasulullah. Nowadays it's okay. We don't have to do this anymore. This is rejection of Allah's ayah. Allah in the Quran says, All of them, they say, this is a set rule. You cannot come and change it, whether you like it or don't like it. And why Imam al was asked, how come 
the lady who's weak and poor, you know, how come she's given half? He says, because she, there is always someone financially responsible for her. She is to be looked after by the father, if not the father, by the brother, if not the brother, by the husband, if not the husband, by the son. Yani, there is always someone, and if none of the above, then the society. The society has to look after her, and the government would look after her. So she all is always looked after. She never is required. She does never has to go to work and earn income. She can choose to go to work and earn income. Yes, no problem. Absolutely. But she does not have to. So because of that, then Allah has given the son twice the share. Because when the son gets the inheritance, he has to share it with his uh, he has to spend, if he has a mother who is incapable of, of uh, sustaining herself, then he has to sustain her. If he has a sister who is incapable of sustaining herself, then he has to sustain her. If he has a, a wife, children, in fact, suppose he had a modest income, but then Allah granted him a blessing with a big inheritance, then he needs to really make it easy on his family, you know, get them more things, share it basically. Well, he can't say, well, this is my inheritance, خلاص, you know, you guys don't. He cannot do that. The wife can. The wife, if she gets an inheritance, she can say, for example, I'm going to buy myself a piece of land you know, for my future. Yani, or maybe I'll build a piece of land. I buy a building. I'll buy an uh, investment property. She can do this. Of course, in a marriage relationship, there is always sharing. There is caring. And the wife, out of her goodness, she can share the wealth with her family, with her husband, pay off some of the debt, some of the loans. Yani, that's the rahmah that Allah has put between the husband and the wife, which is good to have. So these are examples here. Or there is another academic. There is an academic by the name of Fazlur Rahman. He died about 30 years ago, give or take. In one of his papers, he writes, he says, and he was from the U.S., yani academic, uh, Muslim academic, uh, Originally, I believe, from Pakistan and then migrated to the United States. And he was a professor in the U.S. for some time. He writes in one of his paper, a little bit of interest is okay, but too much interest, that's haram. He said, that's contradictory to the Quran. It's not up to you to decide a little bit of interest. Then what is a little bit of interest? You say 1%, 2%, that's little. You know, somebody tells, no, 5% is still little. Another person says, 20% is still little. So it's not up to you to decide. Ahkamullah is not to be dictated by people whether they're academics, whether they're, they consider themselves intellectuals, uh, whatever they are, Ahkamullah are Ahkamullah. And only Maraja' al-Taqlid, who invested years of their lives studying fiqh, jurisprudence, Ahkam, usul, um, uh, the narrations of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam they know the means of deriving laws. We take our Ahkam from such reputable Prominent scholars, may Allah bless them all, inshallah. Okay, so these are different kinds of kufr. And the fifth kind of kufr, according to Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam in the Quran, is the kufr of disavowment. Kufr of disavowment, meaning that, for example, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam tells his people after they disbelieved, he says, kafarna bikum, that we disavow ourselves from you. We don't believe in you. We don't follow you. Um... For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Iblis alayhi la'ainullah. Iblis, inni kafartu, ayah number 22 of Surah Ibrahim. He says, inni kafartu bima ashraktumuni min qabil. On the day of judgment, he says, I do kufr, mean I disavow myself of what you associated me. Yani on the day of judgment, you people followed me, you... In dunya, uh, whatever, I, I have nothing to do with you guys. It's your responsibility. I disavow myself from you. This is kufr al-bara'a. Kufr, the kufr of disavowment. Kufr dis, disassociate. Means I disavow, I disassociate myself from you. So these are the five kinds of kufr according to the Quran. According to Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Now, so people... Came to them, they told them, believe in Allah. They put their hands like, we disbelieve. We don't want to believe in you. We disbelieve in what you were sent with. And we are having great doubt. Shek. Great doubt. Of what you are calling us for. 
يعني we don't know you're telling us there is God there is heaven hell I don't know if any of that is going to exist we are in doubt this is a problem as well there is a very prominent scholar today scholar I mean like academic academic not like alim uh, dean from Oxford he's published so many books so many books doubting the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I have come across people who have been deviated because of his books you know, his books, some of them are bestsellers. Millions of copies have been sold worldwide. One day, about eight years ago, there was an interview with him by a priest. And this was published later on in the Daily Telegraph, the British uh, newspaper. Where the priest asked him, on the scale of zero to seven, where do you rank yourself? Where zero is you absolutely believe in God. Seven, you completely disbelieve in God. Where do you rank yourself? He said, at 6.9. This guy was surprised, like, why 6.9? Why not 7? After all these books that you've written and all these arguments that you have. He looked for a second, paused for a second, and then he said, because I cannot conclusively prove that there is no God. Subhanallah. Yani all these books, all these people being deviated, and I've seen some Muslims, Muslims being deviated by some of his books. Billah. Muslims rejecting Allah, Billah, questioning the existence of Allah because of his books. And his whole argument is based on doubt. I can't completely prove. Yani he's speculating, speculation. It's all based on speculation. Billah. That's what Imam al-Sadiq tells one of the people who were dualists, the Zanadiqa, the atheists, of, like we call them today, atheists. Uh, he told him, if the matter is as you claim, and it is not as you claim, يعني, if it is, there is no Jannah, there is no Jahannam, there is no hellfire, no questioning, then we have not lost anything. يعني, if I pray, I fast, and hypothetically speaking, there is nothing. Have I lost anything? No. But if the matter is as we say, and it is as we say, يعني, it is, there is Jannah, there is Jahannam, there is going to be questioning, if the matter, then we have won and you've lost. You know, خلاص. So be careful, brothers and sisters. Let's not follow any person here and there. Yes, their arguments on the outside may seem to be so good. Just the minute you poke a little bit of holes, it collapses. And when you talk to them, like in this example, this individual who says, um, I cannot conclusively prove that there is a God. You know, a man called Abdul Malik, uh, comes to meet Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam and he was a dualist as well and Imam had a question with him he said have you been to the skies have you gone up he said no so have you been inside the earth no have you traveled all the way to the east of the earth like have you seen all of the whole world no have you seen the west no he says then what do you think there is up there in the skies down here east he says I don't think there is anything whatever it is this is just whatever it is and there is nothing he said that's speculation you've never been up you've never been down you've never been to the east you've never been to the west and here you are telling me that there is nothing you're speculating certainty cannot be nullified by doubt we are certain there is a creator because we see the signs signs one of the sheikhs that I know of uh, he used to be a student at the University of Toronto. He told me, he said, uh, he took a class on astronomy. One day his, professors, uh, his professor, he said, said, he was talking about astronomy and the stars and uh, like, you know, the whole perfection on this world. He says he stopped for a minute and then he turned to us and said, it is difficult to believe that all this came into existence through a random process. SubhanAllah, people who have aql, people who have aql, they cannot accept. How could this whole thing come through a random process? So these are proofs Ahlul Bayt salam use, people use. Don't make people deviate on the basis of doubts. No matter how much their argument sounds so good, little bit of poking holes, خلص, the whole thing collapses. And that's why this man, Abdul Malik, told Imam al-Sadiq, no one spoken, has spoken to me in such logic before. So he believed, he became a mu'min afterwards. So you see? Okay, and then what else? Their messengers reply, Is there any doubt in the Creator, in Allah, the Creator of the heavens and the earth? And you look at this world. How can you believe all this came into existence through a random process? 
that there is no creator. يَدْعُوكُمْ لِيَغْفِرَ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ He calls you. أو من ذنوبكم عفوا. He calls you. Allah is calling us. يعني Allah loves people, brothers and sisters. Allah loves us. Allah wants us to go to Jannah. He created us to have mercy on us. Allah did not create this creation so that he throws them into the hellfire. He loves us. He cares for us. Allah says in the Quran, say, O oh my servants who have gone, done extreme extravagance on themselves. Yani they have been completely disobedient. Yet, don't give up hope from Allah's mercy. Allah forgives all sins. Here, the messengers tell them, Allah is calling you. He, he is يدعوكم. He is inviting you. Why? لِيَغْفِرَ لَكُمْ مِنْ ذُنُوبِكُمْ To forgive your sins for you or of your sins for you. يعني, don't give up hope from Allah's mercy. Don't give up hope. Allah is so merciful, so kind, so forgiving. He wants any excuse for us to be forgiven. It is narrated that on the day of judgment, a person will be brought. You know, some people on the day of judgment, they're different. Some people will go straight to Jannah. Others will take time to go to Jannah. Some people will be ordered to go to the, to the hellfire. And the fear that they experience, that shock, is enough to wash all their remaining sins. Some people now will go inside the fire billah, and spend some time in there until they are forgiven and taken to Jannah. And others will, billah, will be completely in Jahannam. Billah. May Allah not make us among such individuals who enter Jannah or go anywhere near Jannah, inshallah. May Allah keep us at peace on the Day of Judgment with Muhammad wali Muhammad, inshallah. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi wa A person will be ordered on the Day of Judgment. Apparently, maybe he's a mu'man, but maybe he's done a lot of evil deeds that he still have some remaining sins and Allah will orders, order this individual to be taken to Jahannam so the angels will come will chain this individual will drag him towards Jahannam and of course he'll be in shock he'll be in fear and imagine someone's dragging you to throw you in a fire how will you feel how would you say how would you, how would your mindset be so he's in fear and then and then he will look around and Allah will say my angel stop why did you look around my servant of course Allah is not in any physical place he may have turned towards the voice Allah creates voice to speak just like he created a voice to speak to Musa salam. otherwise Allah does not speak and have a voice like we do so because he's not materialistic he's not physical but may or maybe he's turning to the signs of the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe that's where the rahmah of Allah was was there he saw some signs of the rahmah so anyways a person turns back he says Allah says, stop, my angels. My servant, why did you turn back? And he would say, Ya Rab, I know I am sinful. I know I don't deserve your Jannah. I don't know. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness. But in dunya, I was hoping that you would forgive me, Ya Allah. Forgive me. Allah will tell the angels, he's a liar. In dunya, he did not think that I'm going to forgive him. Like he, he never had that thought. He's lying. However, despite him being a liar now, because he looked back and he's hoping for my mercy, then I forgive him, take him to Jannah. Yani again, what probably has happened here is this individual, that scare, that shock that he experienced was enough to forgive his sins and to go to Jannah. But you see how merciful Allah is. Allah is Rahim, Ghafoor, forgiving, merciful, kind compassionate Allah is generous so he really wants us to go to Jannah so let's go to Jannah let's turn to him we will be at happiness in dunya and in akhirah so why not anyways so Allah is calling you to forgive of your sins and he delays your time يعني your life in this dunya until a designated time this is an important thing our life in this dunya, my brothers and sisters, is not fixed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his knowledge, in his ilm, he knows how long we are going to live. This person is going to live 70 years, this person is going to live 50 years, this person is going to live 30 years, and so on and so forth. He knows. However, in order to motivate us, in order to encourage us to work harder, he's given us some flexibility with our timings. How so? Like, what does that mean? Yani you visit your kin, you visit your relatives, you establish good relationship with them, Allah increases your life. 
you disavow your relatives, disconnect yourself from them, and he will decrease your life. You pay sadaqah, Allah will keep harm away from you, and you might live longer, and so on and so forth. You see, so like you have a control over how long you live. That's why there is a hadith from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam who says, more people die of their sins than they die because of the timing of their death. Meaning that they commit so many sins that their time of death is brought sooner than it was designated. And more people live longer because of their good deeds than was designated. Yani they do good deeds, they visit their kin, they pay charity, they pay sadaqah, they do dhikr of Ahlul Bayt. So Allah prolongs their life. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, in his knowledge, he knows how long every person is going to live. But we don't. And so to encourage us, to motivate us, Allah gives us this ability. Allah says, ma yasha wa yuthbit wa indahu ummul kitab. In Surah Al-Ra'ad, verse number 39, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he is the one, يَمْحُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيُثْبِتْ وَعِنْدَهُ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ He deletes whatever he wills. And he writes or designates, but he has the main book, أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ يعني what happens there is the following. Just to give you an analogy to help you understand what we're talking about here. You have a president of a company. He has a laptop or a computer. On that computer, he has a lot of secrets to the company. For example, he has written that I will launch this new product in September, for example. This product will be launched in September. Now, this is, he only has access to this file and to what's on the desktop. However, there is a folder, there is a folder, which is a shared folder. The VPs of the company are aware of it. So he can take some information and put it into that shared folder. Now that the information is in the shared folder, the VPs of the company have access to it. Now they know what is it. He still has the ability to change it. He can change because he, the authority is in his hand. But now the VPs have access to this. The VPs in turn take that information and put it in another folder which is now shared by the employees. So the employees now have access to that information. And then the employees share it with the rest of the people so now everyone has access to that information. The news and everyone, for example, the media. Again, this is just an analogy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ummul kitab, the desktop, you know, the secrets, all the secrets. Then he takes information and he puts them by his will onto Kitab al Mahwi wal Ithbat. The prophets, the messengers, the Imams Ali Musalam know what happens in there. So now, just like those VPs, those VPs know exactly what's happening now. Now they have access to that information. Their heart has access to that information. They inform the people. Imam Ali Ali Salam informed, for example, uh, Mitham al Tamar that Ya Mitham. This is how you're going to be killed in such manner. So Mitham now became aware. And then Mitham, when he was asked by uh, Ubaidillah ibn Ziyad, Ubaidillah ibn Ziyad brought him, he said, how did your master tell you I'm going to kill you? He said, this is how you're going to be, how, how he told me, this is how you're going to kill me. He says, then, well, do that then, do that. And indeed, they crucified him on a palm tree and they killed him, Rabbanullah ta'ala alayh, Mitham. Uh, Rashid or Rashid al-Hujri, he also knew. Habib ibn Mabahir al-Asadi, he was taught some things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes it from the Ummul Kitab, puts it in this book, which is called Mahwil wal Ithbat, Kitab al Mahwi, or Lawhul Mahwi wal Ithbat. The Imams, the Prophets, they have access to this, and then they tell some of their companions, and some of those companions tell the people. So you see how it is? Okay. But Allah can still change. Allah can still change. Allah, for example, promised Musa, he told Musa, come for 30 days. So he told his people, I'm going to go for 30 days. Upon arriving to the mountain, Allah added 10 more days. And those were the 10 days that he added to test the children 
of Israel. And that's during these 10 extra days, they started worshipping the calf. And that's what Imam al-Baqir says in the Wahan Hadith. That Allah told him 30 days. He told them 30 days. But then when he arrived, Allah added 10 extra days. And that were the, taste, the days in which those people deviated. The essence of the Hadith of Imam al-Baqir So you see, Allah can change things. Yani the Prophet, the Imams can see that, for example, so-and-so would live for 70 years. But this could change, could change because of this person's action. That's why when we pray, Allahumma ajjil li waliyyik al-faraj, hasten the reappearance of our Imam. If we continue to pray, if we continue to ask Allah, then yes, the time could be brought sooner. Allah knows when that time is because he knows what the people will do. But it gives the people that ability, that flexibility. And let's say, for example, that v or that president of the company, he says that the product will be launched in September. But when he puts it down into this uh, folder for the VPs, he, shares, he puts July. In his mind, he knows it's going to be September. But he put it in July maybe to motivate these people so that they can work hard, they be encouraged. And when he sees them working really hard and they're trying to meet the deadline, he'll come to them and will say to them, good job, you guys, well done. You've been working really hard. I'm going to extend the deadline by two months so that you guys have a break. You know, like kind of a reward. I'm going to reward you. Okay. So he knew it was going to be September. But he did not release that information to those people. He put July as the release date of the product. But then he changed it. Based on their actions and their motivation and their charisma and hard work, he changed it for them. Allah knows, subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he knows exactly what's going to happen. He wants to motivate the people, encourage the people. So, for example, Imam al-Sadiq, alayhi salam, tells Muyassar, a man, one of his companions, that several times death came to you, yani till your time came, but Allah postponed it away from you because... You are kind to your family and relatives. So Allah pushed death away from you. We have people, for example, who pay sadaqat. And because of the sadaqat, Allah prolongs their lives, keep harm away from them. So that's what the ayah is referring to here. When Allah says, وَيُؤَخِّرُكُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّىٰ And he keeps and he delays you until a specific time. That's what it means. Yani he knows what the time is, but you have control. So you have some flexibility on influencing when you die. That's why it's good to always recite ayat, istighfar, give sadaqat, pray to Allah for guidance. Uh, so continuously ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that also answers the question that people say, okay, so in the night of Qadr, it means Allah, you know, we have a hadith that things are determined on the night of Qadr. Yes, they're determined, but there is still that flexibility. There is still that flexibility and therefore people can still change things. It's not completely, Allah knows, but people have a control. That's why after Laylatul Qadr, we still read the du'as. Imam al-Sadiq, for example, says, Allahumma ni as'aluka. Oh Allah, I ask you this du'a that we read on Laylatul Qadr. Fi ma taqdi wa tuqaddr. We continue to read this dua. Yani, ya Allah, I ask you by through the determination that does not change and things like this. Even after Laylatul Qadr, Imam Musalaq says, read this dua throughout the whole month of Ramadan. Yani, we should, if we just come to Laylatul Qadr and then khalas, that's it. We sit back and khalas, everything is determined now. Then why did Imam say continue reading this dua? Yani, the things can change. We have a hadith, لا يرد القضاء إلا الدعاء When Allah determines something, determined it in Mahwa wal Ithbat, that book which changes. Things could change in that book. Then a person prays dua, ask Allah for help, ask Allah for forgiveness, and Allah will change that for the individual. In his Ummul Kitab, Allah knows that does not change. But in Mahwa wal Ithbat, things change. So therefore, we do have an ability to change things. Okay? And then the uh, people, the people of those prophets who wanted to disbelieve, they say, you are but people like us. You just want to misguide us from worshipping what our forefathers used to worship us. So bring us a proof. Some people, subhanallah, they just want denial. You know, bring us proof, bring us this, bring us that. As I mentioned, Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had Abu Dhar and he had Abu Jahl. Abu Dhar believed so that's the minute he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He heard Rasulullah, he believed. 
other people no show us miracles do this for us do that for us and they still don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa let us not be people of arrogance and this is not only with regards to Iman and, and, uh, and Kufr like believing in Allah sometimes people are arrogant they don't want to accept that they're wrong they feel that I am impeccable whatever I do is perfect that's also not right if when a person comes to you in privacy and that's how we should approach people to give them uh, constructive criticism privately you tell them that you know for example I saw their shortcomings when someone comes to you privately with some shortcomings be receptive be grateful and try to change try to change on Laylatul Qadr one of the du'as we read was du'a makarmul akhlaq read this du'a regularly and ask Allah to give us the best of akhlaq inshallah so that we become inshallah among the best of the people that Allah gives us tawfiq Raise your hands in the du'a, brothers and sisters. We ask Allah, if he has not yet forgiven us by this night, that on this night that he forgives us, insha'Allah, and erases all our sins, insha'Allah, and make us among the people of Jannah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 اللهم اكشف عنا السوء يا الله اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا كفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار مع محمد وآله الأطهار اللهم اقض حوائج المؤمنين والمؤمنات شافي وعافي جميع مرضى المؤمنين والمؤمنات يا الله all those who ask us to remember them in our dua Grant them, Ya Allah, their hajat, fulfill their needs. Those who are ill, grant them a quick and complete recovery, Ya Allah. All those who are in need, Ya Allah, help them and fulfill their needs, Ya Allah. The mu'mineen, the mu'minat. Unite the Muslims together, insha'Allah. Keep harm away from humanity at large, Ya Allah, and unite people in peace and in love. O oh Allah, forgive our parents. Rabbi ghfirli wa li walidayya wa rhamhuma kama rabbayani saghira. O oh Allah, bless our children and make them among the pious. Rabbij anni muqim as salati wa mandurriyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua. O Allah, hasten the reappearance of our Imam, Ajalallah ta'ala, Farajahu sharif and make us among his Shia and his companions. Warzukna al shahada tabayna yadayh. Allahumma kun li waliyika al hujjat ibn al hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala aba fi adhi al saati wa fi kulli saa. Waliyan wa hafidan wa qaidan wa nasiran wa dalilan wa ayna. حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين لقضاء الحوائج to fulfill all the needs for the quick and complete recovery of all those who are ill لشفاء المرضى to remove all the calamities and the harm away from humanity at large لكشف هذه الغم عن هذه الأمة to hasten the reappearance of our Imam عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف and to have us for be forgiven إن شاء الله and among the people of Jannah and for the arwah of all marhumin, mu'mineen and mu'minat, our marhumin, your marhumin, brothers and sisters, those who were with us and are no longer with us anymore, may Allah bless their souls, insha'Allah, the arwah of the shuhada, the ulama, all mu'mineen and mu'minat, rahim Allah man yaqra'a surat al-mubarakat al-fatiha, ma'a salawat, Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.